This redemption and cleaning comes not by anything we can do, nor by any works we can do. It is a free gift from Yahweh. Now in English it's called grace. Um, this is a strong synonym for it. It is the unmerited favor Yahweh has done for his created dust beings. We can be set back into right standing with Yahweh and Yahweh then expects us to stay clean and unspotted, to walk in perfect obedience, to be set apart as he is set apart, or as, as he said, be ye holy as I am holy. And he will give us the power to do it and to perform the work. Uh, what modern Christianity has done, and <clears throat> we'll go into more of that in another in other videos, but uh, they're saying, oh, we have grace. We don't have to do anything. Oh, his grace took away the law. It took away everything, and we're, you know, uh, it's, you know, it's the same thing as we're by faith alone. So as long as we believe, we don't have to work. We just believe. And, of course, the Bible says it is by our works that our faith is proven. And there's nothing further from the truth than <clears throat> to say um, uh, grace abounds forever and ever because... Um, We'll, we'll get into that here about what Paul said, but it is by our works that our faith is proven. And as I said before, when Abraham's faith, would Abraham's faith have been counted as righteousness if he had not acted upon it with his works? No, it wouldn't have. It simply would not have. He would have just been, would have been nothing. So when you look at this word grace in the Hebrew, uh, we find that it simply means as the beauty of a camp to give or show beauty, grace or mercy to another. <clears throat> and this word in Hebrew uh, look at look at it. It's a camp. It's a wall. It's around here. Here, here's what it says. The uh, when you look at the pictographs, um, uh, it's a picture of a seed meaning to continue, um, combined with the wall. Um, we're brought into his camp. He has said, I will surround you. I am going to do this for you. I am going to take care of you. I'm going to forgive you. It's an unmerited favor. That's really what it is. And uh, it comes from the other. Um, you know, B is compassion. Uh, we're in the clan. We're placed with freedom. A place of freedom. What does that mean? That doesn't mean you're free to be disobedient it means you're free uh, to live with him to be with him in the camp and when we look at it in the uh, Greek again it's the same thing it's gracious it's gratitude he well gratifying um, manner of act uh, grace the divine influence upon the heart reflection uh, benevolence towards us. There's nothing in here that says the removing of the law from or removing of the requirement to obey the law. It's not here. And it is an absolute lie from the devil that uh, saved by grace alone um, uh, stuff that is out there. It is a lie by the devil. We have to obey. Once we're clean, we have to obey. We have to do his commandments. We have to do what is right. Then once, <clears throat> now how do we get that cleanliness? Is through the baptism. And 
baptism is an absolute fundamental requirement of the redemption. Without it, you cannot be redeemed. And the those living uh, before Yeshua came looked at him for that. And they were clean themselves and they did their purification rites. They did things looking towards him. Now, here's the thing we should be cognizant of is that there were not very many that were of the children of Israel that actually are saved. Most of them have been destroyed. They're very, very, very few. So you can't look at the apostates and say, well, look what they did. You, you can never do that. Because actually the, the 3,000 that he kept to himself and whatever, you don't even see them. You don't even hear about them. They're hidden from you. All you really see is the transgressing ones when you read the prophets as they were uh, uh, reprimanding the the children of Israel <clears throat> so in Romans 6 1 what shall we say then shall we continue in sin that grace that this favor may abound Yahweh forbid you cannot sin. You cannot, not, not, not. You can't do it. You have got to stop the sin. Because if you don't, you're dead again. You're just dead. The soul that sinneth, it shall die, and that is it. If you continue to sin, if you sin again, you're going to die. How shall we that are dead to sin? If we've died to sin living any longer there and why do you keep doing it then know you not that as many of us that were baptized into Yeshua Messiah were baptized into his death therefore we are buried with him by baptism into death and if you're never buried by baptism if you've been sprinkled or if you've just skipped that process then you have never been born again because you're not in his resurrection, period. That like as the Messiah was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also shall walk in newness of life. The same newness, <clears throat> because we're made new. That's what being called born again is. For if we've been planted together in the likeness of his death, if you've never entered into that baptism, then you've never been planted in the likeness of his death. We shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection. Never done it. You've never done that work in your life. So if you've not been baptized, then, then you better get it. Fortunately, there's many out there that have been baptized into a false death and resurrection into a false because they've never really repented they've been baptized into church doctrines they've signed their paper they agreed to believe the elders that <clears throat> you know is a requirement you have to you, you, if you re, if you said no I don't think the elders are right you would never get baptized you got to go through some kind of of uh, cultic uh, proving ritual before you can be baptized or or you just get sprinkled or you have to sign a piece of paper saying that you're going to be in the church these kind of things are going on out here this and this is false this is false this is false it is not being baptized into the death and resurrection. Oh, they'll say those words. But all the stuff that goes through it, when it gets right down to it, they have tainted it and they've made it a lie what they're doing. And it's a false, it's a false uh, baptism. So anyhow, <clears throat> knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. In other words, we cannot sin. We are not to 
be in sin, period. We have got to stop the sin. In Acts 2.36, it comes down and gets pretty simple. <clears throat> and we could have taken this whole thing and just said this right here, but, but there's for good understanding of it. Because when Peter was talking to them, and you can go back and read this all for yourselves, he told them what they did, that they had slain the Messiah, and they, they cried out, therefore, he cried out, he said, therefore let all the house of Israel know assuredly that Yahweh hath made that same Yeshua whom ye have crucified, both master and the Messiah. In other words, the top dog, the ruler, and the Messiah. Now you notice, if Yahweh had to make Yeshua that, then Yahweh, Yeshua cannot be Yahweh, and Yeshua cannot be a God in a Trinitarian three-headed God where they're all equal if Yahweh made Yeshua something like that. Uh, and I say that because the Trinity is such a bogus lie. And all of the churches out there are doing it. Even, you know, I was kicked out of the Apostolic Christian Church of America for believing the Sabbath and the commandments and what have you. And <clears throat> and they, I, I was shocked when I learned that, that they believe that Yeshua is God. I mean, it blows my mind that they believe that. I can't believe it. I can't believe why anybody would believe that there's nothing in Scripture that comes of that. And the Scripture is so clear uh, that Yeshua was the son of Yahweh. <clears throat> and we'll go in, in further studies and show you even more who this son of man was. So anyhow, Yahweh made him both the master, the judge, and the Messiah. Now, when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart, which I hope you are. If you're listening to this, I hope it pricks you in your heart. And said to Peter and to the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, what shall we do? Then Peter said unto them, Repent, which is what you got to do first. You got to take it in your heart and say, Hey, this is wrong. I got to change. I'm going to obey you, Father. Be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Yeshua the Messiah for the redemption of sins. You don't get baptized. You don't have redemption. You're not made clean. That is what it is. You go down into the water. In the death of Yeshua, you come up in the resurrection of Yeshua, and you have the redemption. You're washed clean. And when you do that, then you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. And that Holy Spirit then will, which is the power of Yahweh in your heart, in your life, to help you to live your life for him. For the promise is unto you and your children and to all that are far off, even as many as the El Yahweh shall call. Has he called you? Is this pricking your heart? Is it sending you? If it doesn't touch your heart, then I guess you're not called. I guess he hasn't called you. But the El Yahweh shall call you. And with many other words did he testify and exhort, saying, this is Peter. And he says, Save yourselves from this unforward generation or this this backward generation. Unforward, and that that's a really weird English word, isn't it? And that this falling backward generation is what it means. So 
that is the redemption plan. It's very simple. Now, we haven't talked about nothing about when a man dies, a state of the dead, uh, the evil spirits and the warfare that we are in or anything. This is simply these three lessons, lessons were why we, where we came from, how we fell, and how Yahweh has made a way to bring us back to him. And really, if you stop right here, you got it made. If you will obey him, but we will get into um, what we need to obey in the, I, we'll make it the next video. Lesson four, we'll talk about, okay, what does it mean to go and sin no more? What do we have to do? What is sin? How do we uh, make sure we walk in righteousness and don't sin? So <clears throat> that'll be our next video. And remember, this is what Yeshua says in John 5.39. He says, search the scriptures. For in them you think you have eternal life, and they are they which testify of me. So search them. you got to believe them and search them. Get it right. It's not the doctrines of men, folks. It's not the doctrines of the Catholic Church. It's not the doctrines of the Protestants. It's the doctrine of Yahweh and his Messiah. So may Yahweh bless his word until next time. Thank you for listening.